All right, folks, I have an awesome little lecture here on editing symbols. I'm gonna show you how to edit them in place, edit them from the library. We're gonna explain how each symbol has its own timeline with its own layers. You'll see how you can nest one symbol inside of another symbol. And in cases where you want two symbols to be sort of the same, but not exactly, I'm gonna show you how to make a duplicate of an existing symbol. So for this exercise, there's not much that you need to do. Just sit back and watch, soak it all in, and then I'll have a little exercise for you so that you can do some of this stuff for yourself. Let's go. All right, so here in Animate CC, I have a file opened up, and in the library, I have this face, and I have eye symbols, okay? So I have nothing on the stage right now. I'm gonna take the face, and I'm going to take multiple instances of this face out of the library and place them on the stage. Now, I'm gonna go over my Properties panel, and I wanna show you that when I click on this item, the Properties panel tells me it's an instance of face. If I click on this one, it is also an instance of face. And as you can imagine, so is the third one. Now, I can transform different instances of the face. So for instance, I can make this one here smaller. I can take this one and rotate it. And I can take this one here and do something like, I don't know, let's change the uh, alpha of it down to 40%. So I have three different instances of the same symbol. Scaling this one doesn't change this one or this one. Now suppose after doing all this amazing work, I decide that I want to edit the face. Maybe I want to make it a little bit happier. So there's two ways to edit a symbol. One way is to edit in place, which means that I edit it directly on the stage, or I can edit it from the library. Before I do anything, I want to point out that in my main timeline, you'll see that I have a faces layer here with one keyframe, and up top, it tells me I'm in scene one. Now watch what happens when I double click on this face. Double click. What happens is I literally go inside of the face symbol. So you'll see that I'm in scene one inside the face and now I have three different layers. I have a head layer, a mouth layer, and an eyes layer. One of the most amazing things about Animate is that every symbol has its own timeline. So right now, I'm in symbol edit mode, editing the timeline and the assets inside the face. So let me just take this little line here, and using my free transform tool, I'm just going to bend it down and make it a smiley face. Now notice that as I'm bending this back and forth, look at the other two faces that you see. They're sort of grayed out a little bit, but as I'm making changes inside the face, all of the instances of the face on the main timeline are also being updated, all right? This is really cool. So as I'm editing, I'm seeing how other instances at different sizes and opacities are being changed. I'm gonna go back to scene number one, and now you'll see that all the faces are selectable in scene one, and they all have a smiley face. I can double click on the scale down face here to go into symbol edit mode again, and you'll see the same head, mouth, and eyes layers down below. And I could select the background color and just change the fill. Maybe I'm gonna make them all pink smiley faces, okay? Go back to scene one, and now all the different faces have changed. If I go into my library, you'll also see that the face symbol now has this magenta background, if you will. The second way of editing a symbol is editing it from the library. Watch what happens if I double click on the symbol in the library. It takes me again into symbol edit mode for the face, and you'll see that I see all three layers for the face, but now I'm seeing just the face. I'm not seeing anything else on the main timeline. So let me just take that background color, and I'm going to change it back to a friendly yellow, and there I go. So I've edited the face from the library. I'm gonna click back to scene number one, and voila. All instances of the symbol have updated. One of the biggest mistakes people new to Flash make is that they can sometimes inadvertently double click on a symbol. They go into symbol edit mode and they're sort of thrown off by, wait, what are all these layers here? Or why aren't I seeing the uh, tweens that I have on stage? So always be conscious of if you're in symbol edit mode or if you're on the main timeline. So right now, this tells me I'm editing the face and I can click back to scene number one and there's my main timeline. Another cool thing about symbols is that you can have nested symbols. So let me double click on the face again, and I'm gonna show you that in the eyes layer here, this 
object here, if I go to the properties panel, is an instance of I. So inside of the face, I have an instance of the eye. In fact, I have two different instances of the eye. So if I wanted to give this eye maybe a black pupil or something like that, I could double click on any instance. Now you'll see that I'm in scene one, inside the face, inside the eye, and I'm just going to take my oval tool, set the fill color to black. I'm gonna get rid of any sort of a stroke. Let me just zoom in a little bit, and I'm just gonna draw a little black circle. When I'm drawing the pupil inside of this eye, you can see the other eye gets it as well. Go back to the face, go back to scene one, let me zoom out a little bit, and now all three instances of this symbol have eyes that have the black circle pupil and a smiley face. So it's very important to understand that every symbol has its own timeline and symbols can be nested inside of other symbols. This is incredibly powerful. And also editing any instance of a symbol will update all other instances of the symbol. I'm gonna to go to my library and let me take another face out right here. Now suppose I wanted this to be a pink face, but all these other faces I wanted to be yellow. Well, I've already shown you that editing one is going to update all of them. So what I could do is right click and I'm going to say, let's duplicate this symbol all the way down here and now I'm gonna call it face pink, okay? Notice that another symbol shows up in the library. It's a duplicate of the original one. And I can double click on it to go into symbol edit mode of face pink. I can select this circle here and I can change its color to pink. And now I've only changed this one here. I'll go back to scene one and now I have a pink face and I have three yellow faces. I'm gonna switch over to another file and here I have a face that's being animated. On the main timeline, I have a face layer and I have a few classic tweens with the face spinning and then it pulses up, scales back down, and then it rolls off stage. So it's important to note that in frame one, this thing here is an instance of face and in frame number 15, I have a keyframe that also has an instance of face. So all of these keyframes each have an instance of face. So if I double click on this face here, again, I go into symbol edit mode and I'm gonna take the mouth and I'm going to make it a smiley face. When I go back to scene one, all the instances of the face in all the different states of animation are now updating. Again, editing the symbol updates all instances of that symbol in your project. In the next video, I'll show you how to create your own symbols, and then we'll talk about creating your own animated symbols. It's so awesome. Hey, what's up? Real quick, if you liked the video, please consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to get notified when new videos come out, just click that little bell. Ding dong. If you got any comments, leave them below. I'll read every one and do my best to help you. Have an awesome day. Normal daddy.